Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Secret Base figure preview video. Now before we begin, I as always have to say a huge thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out in person and snapping these gorgeous high res pictures. Show Ryan some love in the comments below cause without him this series quite literally wouldn't be possible. If you are looking to pre-order your very own Green Goblin with the purple hoodie, he is available from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans as well as a points based reward system. While you're down in the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review or preview video goes live on the channel. Now this guy, to me at least, was a huge surprise. I don't know if he was for you, let me know down below, but Hot Toys showed off the first version of Goblin, the more classic Raimi-esque look from Spider-Man 1, and I thought, well, that's clearly it. They're not going to expect us to double dip, especially not with the higher price point with the glider and the brand new head sculpt, but oh no, they do expect you to double dip. They want you to have two Goblins in the display, and I for one am all for it. I'm all in on both of them. Do let me know which you prefer, which one you'd rather go with, or are you getting both like me? As I said, let me know. Now he does come with a full array of hands, but they're not the exact same hands as the other goblin. There's some kind of greebly style silver tech plates on the outside of his hands. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the molds for the gloves are identical. They've just added some of that detail on the outside and painted it silver. Now, I still would love to have pairs of every single hand, but Hot Toys, it seems, are being stingier and stingier with their hand selection as time goes on. As I said, I don't love that. He does come with a couple of blades, as you can see. They snap onto the gauntlet, a pumpkin bomb or two, as well as the goggles. Now, I would have loved to have seen the helmet here. I know, it's not accurate to have the helmet on in this outfit, but with the purple hoodie and the helmet, I've seen some photoshops online and it looks really, really cool. So I'm tempted to try and pick up another helmet and display him with it on anyway. Now, this is the exact same head sculpt that we're getting with the other goblin. So if you're wondering, cause when they announced that one, they blurred out the head sculpt because they weren't done yet. Yes, both of these goblins share the exact same head sculpt. Now, they also share the same style of display base. It's hexagonal, and it's a rather small footprint. So that has me wondering, okay, he's supposed to balance on the dynamic flight pole and stand on the glider. The glider itself shouldn't be super light, so... Is this thing going to topple over, or is it going to be sturdy and planted? Now, I don't exactly know the answer to that question yet. Don't worry, we'll do a bit of a stability test when either this guy or the original eventually releases. Now, the first version was announced quite some time ago, eight months to be precise, so if Hot Toys are following that 12 to 18 months release cycle, then... Fingers crossed we shouldn't have to wait too long to get the first one. And who knows, maybe Hot Toys knew that and they were thinking, ooh, well, we're about to release the first one, therefore maybe collectors will be more willing to buy another one? Who knows? But I'm hoping that is the case and we do see the other version soon, because a Hot Toys Green Goblin is something I've wanted for years. Now, the glider itself does look to be identical to the first release. It looks like it's got multiple moving parts and pieces. It's painted in bright silver in certain areas. There's pitting, there's weathering, there's dirt and grime, and a little bit of dry brushing as well. It does connect on the underside with the dynamic flight pole, and it's not overly tall either. That means, fingers crossed, you should have enough height to where he is visible in the display, but not too much height where he's a little bit top heavy and unstable like we discussed just before. The spikes at the front of the glider are present so if you do want to have him impaling someone or maybe even integrated suit Spidey holding the glider above his head, 
totally oppose I'm going to do in the review, mind you, then yeah, the spikes are absolutely there. You also have some teeny tiny missiles on the underside, then up top, a bunch of purple and some stirrups for his feet to slide into. Now, Hot Toys haven't made a Green Goblin glider before, so I'm pretty curious to see how this all works. Are there pegs on the underside of the feet, kind of like what Toys Era did? Or are you just supposed to wedge them in there and hope for the best? Once again, a ton of questions, all of which I plan to answer in the full review. To tell you the truth, I'm kind of struggling to talk about the glider a second time. I liked it originally, and I like it here too. So, let's move on to Goblin. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if certain parts and pieces, the moulded plastic parts, are shared between the original and this one, just slightly modified. Because, of course, in the movie, this is the same suit he starts off with, just modified for some unknown reason. I would have liked to have seen said reason as to why Goblin makes all these changes, but nevertheless, there are some added bits and pieces, some armor plates, and a ton of damage. There are certain sections that have been torn away, you can kind of see this mesh underneath. And the green for the Goblin suit is still just as metallic as it was the first time. I like the suit on the original, and I like it here too. If I did have to choose my favourite of the two looks, I don't know what to tell you, I'd still probably lean towards the original. I mean, it's just so iconic. That's the look for Goblin that I grew up with. I saw the first Raimi film on screen, on the big screen when I was a young lad, so that design has just stuck with me, even though this is really cool and a little bit more detailed. I'd have to say my favourite is still the first one. Nevertheless, let's focus on this suit, because there is a lot to discuss here. There's this kind of base layer of that rubbery textured fabric. Then you do have certain sections where you can see this mesh style material poking through. Now, I was hoping that would be this kind of stretchy spandex, but under closer inspection, that looks like rubbery plastic as well. That does make sense. It's kind of Hot Toys MO just to print all the details on one piece of fabric. But, you know, a collector can still hope. The armoured plates are separate attachments over the top. They look like rubbery plastic. There's certain gold pieces with the paint chipped away. And you can see some bright silver underneath. Now, unfortunately, it does look like there's a little bit of pleather here. Not the belt and the pouches, no, 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 they look like sculpted plastic, and I'm actually really happy about that, because the less pleather, the better. It actually looks like that strap over the top is that kind of suede-like material. Sometimes that does disintegrate over time. My DX07 Luke's boots were made of a very similar fabric, and unfortunately, they've started to degrade something fierce. I'm hoping that doesn't happen with this guy, because... Everything else is made of rubbery plastic, rubbery fabric, and even those belts, like I said, are solid pieces. It's just that one strap, Hot Toys, you sneaky devils. You always have to sneak in just a little bit of pleather. Now, the purple for his X hoodie used to be a hoodie, not any longer. It's got gashes in it. It's a little bit of dirt and grime around the edges. I'd like to see a little bit more of that. He also has a wire around his hood, so you can totally pose it. How will it look with the helmet on, seeing as the helmet has such a long back part of the head? I don't know, but you can bet that I'm definitely going to try that out when I get this figure and the original one in hand. He does have an additional pumpkin bomb in one hand, and a little bit more of that purple hoodie wrapped around his elbow. That piece should be adjustable up and down if you want to move it out of the way or remove it entirely, that is going to be up to you. On the other side, he's got this strapped-on bracer. That's, of course, where you'll find the blades. And don't forget, you've got the switch-out ones from earlier as well. One shorter set and one longer set, kind of like Hot Toys Predator figures from back in the day. 
I would have loved if they were made of real metal, but no, no, they look to be made of plastic, and they are really, really prickly looking, so when you get this guy, an early warning, be careful not to spike yourself. There are also some missiles on the gauntlet. That's something that I didn't even notice in the movie. That's one of the reasons why I started collecting figures back in the day, because sometimes on the big screen the suits are moving by so fast, or the lighting is really dark and gloomy, you don't get to see everything, but in figure format, there's no hiding, you can see it all. Speaking of seeing it all, in the movie one of the main reasons why they ditched the helmet is because Willem Dafoe is a very animated actor, he's got expressions. Therefore, they decided we're going to ditch the helmet, give him the freedom to actually express and emote, and I think it worked for the better. I still love the helmet, but this head sculpt is incredible. This might just be one of my new favourite Hot Toys head sculpts of all time. Yeah, it's that darn good. Now, this is a prototype, so it's worth noting that there might be some changes between this one and the final, but I sure as heck hope there aren't any changes, because oh my goodness, this is Willem Dafoe. The hair is all sculpted, but with kind of individual strands and gaps, making it look more realistic. I adore the expression, very sinister and very goblin. You can even see a gap between his front teeth, and I don't think I've ever seen Hot Toys do that before. This head sculpt is truly next level. Hot Toys have seen what other companies are doing, and they said, Oh no, we see you, but we're going to raise the bar just a little, or in fact, a lot, with this head sculpt right here. You can also move the eyes. I'm one of those collectors that have said in the past, hey, why don't we have moving eyes on every head sculpt? And I stick by that, because with a head sculpt like this, being able to move the eyes just makes it even more expressive. And that's exactly how I would describe this head sculpt as a whole. Super expressive. It also has a fixed neck, meaning you have all the wrinkling and the slightly loose skin of an older Willem Dafoe, making it look, once again, realistic counter. Super realistic. Now, could you potentially use this to kit bash a Norman? Oh, yes, absolutely. Is that something I'm tempted to do? Also, yes, we'll try it out in the full review. Now, you can pop the goggles on this head sculpt and the hood, but I wouldn't want to hide it behind all that stuff. I'd want it fully on display, because I am so darn impressed. Hot Toys, you have my attention. If you deliver this quality with the final product, it's going to be a massive win for the company. Do let me know what you think of this goblin and this head sculpt down in the comments below, because I want to know if you're as impressed as I am. Now, I am also pretty curious to try out this head sculpt on the Toy Zero Goblin, because is it compatible? I don't know, but I'll definitely find out. There are a ton of combinations, and I plan to try them all. Now, if you are looking to pre-order this goblin, or the other one from eight months ago, they are available from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.